Welcome back to the Forensics Detailing Channel. Want to know what the best product is that you can spray on your car, tidy it up, spruce up the panels, add some protection, add some gloss, remove light marks, all that sort of stuff. You come to the right place. This is the best detailing video, spray and shine 2023 with an updated star studded lineup. Welcome back to the Forensics Detailing channel. Before we get started, if you're new to detailing, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you can keep up to date with all the product testing that we do on this channel, and it's vast. Now, I've got eight products here that you can spray on your car, and they'll shine them up. Some of them are more quick detailers. Some of them might lean towards more being spray sealants. Some of them have got state-of-the-art technology like graphene. Some of them have got obsolete, out-of-date ceramic technology now. I say that with a little joke. Some of them are just plain old simple detailers with no frills and no fuss. Um, what I'm going to do is walk you through the lineup and also do the first comparison of product information, and that is the cost so we can get a good idea of what the value is you get for these. So our first product in this test, the most expensive guys, costing a whopping £47.90 per litre based on the translated price of this 500ml bottle. But just remember the cost per litre, £47.90. This is the Angel Wax Atomic QED. So you know Angel Wax have their normal detailing products, which are pretty good value. Then they had their Enigma range, which is premium and kind of a little bit more expensive. And then they have their Atomic range, which is the new stuff, which includes kind of graphene. So this is meant to be their graphene quick detailer. Is the graphene gonna make it superior to the others? Who knows? So the most expensive at £47.90 per litre is the Angel Wax Atomic. Next up from the US and A is the Griots Ceramic 3-in-1 Wax. Been wanting to test this for quite a while. It's highly regarded, so it's more like a spray wax that's infused with a ceramic SiO2 additive, which is supposed to help with all sorts of things according to the industry. Now, this product costs £41.52 when you translate this 650ml bo uh, bottle through to a litre offering. So it's pretty expensive, guys. Next in the lineup, from Soft99, is the Speed and Barrier Fuso Coat Boost, which we've sort of talked about on the channel before. So you could say this is more of like a spray sealant. It's, it's fluoro polymer base, the kind of derivative of PTFE, um, which is supposed to give you self-cleaning and slickness and stuff like that. So it might be a bit more than a normal detailing spray. This product cost roughly uh, 40 pounds per litre, translated price of this 400 mil bottle to give you a comparison. So we're coming down in price. Next in the lineup is the Auto Glim from the UK, um, the Rapid Ceramic Spray. So this is like an SI uh, spray sealant, if you like, that you can apply to your car very rapidly and it claims kind of ultra high, vo high ultra high, uh, <laughs> ultra high hydrophobicity, hydrophobidity, uh, and good durability. We've had it on the channel before. We know it lasts on the panel well. It costs around £39.98 for the translated price per litre of this 500ml bottle. Shop around, always for prices, and all of the products shown I will link in the description. Next, we've reviewed this before on the channel. This is the, um, coming from the USMA as well, is the Phoenix EOD Titan Hybrid Detailer, which again is supposed to be a sort of SiO2 enhanced latest technology detail spray. Okay, what's the price of this thing? Well, it's we take a big jump down in price now, and this is £33.82, approximately, always shop around, translated price per litre, which is pretty impressive, considering it's come over from the USA. Usually you get that added import cost and the price of American products are really expensive, but that's in the top quarter of the field. But is it because it's less of a spray sealant than perhaps these ones and more of just the generic detailer that the price should be lower? Just putting things like this into your head. Next up, we have the very nice slick branding carbon collective Rapide. Not, is that Rapide with an E on the end? Rapide. 
a quick detailer. So this doesn't have any SIO who, SIO2, it doesn't have any graphene, it doesn't make any bold claims around durability, so it's more a belt and braces missionary position quick detailer spray. That's also reflected in the price, which is another big step down. Translated price of £27.90 per litre for this 500ml offering. So a lot cheaper now, we're getting to the top three on value, so that's third in value. Second, we featured this on the channel as well. This is the PNS, gotta be careful how you say that. <laughs> Dream maker. Um, you know, the, the little brother of bead maker, the very popular product. My arm's aching, I'm holding the product up. Um, this product costs 27 pound 39 pence per litre, which is really good translated price considering it's come over from America. So it should be, it should be an added cost on that. So it's relatively affordable. Second place on value, good, good job. And the cheapest product in the test offering you the most value. So if, you, if it's all about the money and you just want something you can spray on your car and clean it up and shine it up, the Freckler G3 Rapid Pro <laughs> Detailer, this product costs where is it, John? Seventeen ninety-five per litre, based on the translated price of this. And you can pick it up in Halfords as well, I believe. Um, so that offers phenomenal value in comparison in this field. So that is category number one, the value for money. I'm going to put the points up. The one that uh, offers the most value gets the highest points, and I'll scale it all the way down from there. So let's get that on the board and move on to the next test. Booyaka. Next up, beading or hydrophobidity. Now, everyone screams at me and tells me that beading is not important and they don't like it. But whenever I show a picture of a product not beading or it's just shooting off the water slowly, people also go mad. So there are a lot of people that want beading, whether or not you're a bead connoisseur or not. So let's get stuck into this, guys. These bottom three, Carbon Collective, Dream Maker, and Freckla have virtually no beading, they have a slight hydrophobic effect and I've ranked them in that order. Um, but you wouldn't buy any of these products if you love seeing water repellency on your car after you've applied, applied them. Those three have very low hydrophobicity. The Angel Wax um, Atomic QED adds a sort of faster rapid sheeting but it's not, it's not super hydrophobic so it's kind of somewhere in the middle and I would still probably say you wouldn't buy the Angel Wax Atomic if you really like that reactive, snapping, fast water action off of your car. These top order ones are, could probably claim decent hydrophobicity. Titan is a step up in hydrophobicity from the Angel Wax. Um, you are starting to get some beadage with this. It's decent, so you would apply it and you would get some water behavior that you might like the look of, you know, so it can do that. But you won't get the big perp round beads like you do with a product like Sonax BSD or something like that. You just won't. Another step up with from the Titan is the um, Griot's hybrid, uh, ceramic 3-in-1 wax. Come on brain. This has decent beading. What did I give it out of 10 um, on the beading score? A 6 out of 10, probably above average and you, you, would, you will notice it. Next after that, with a seven out of 10 for the beadage was in the hydrophobicity, not just beading. I, I do a test where I see how fast it flicks and the water trails off the panel and also then put mist onto the panel, build up the beads, so I do two types of tests. And this one has a decent amount of hydrophobicity, seven out of 10. And the winner and the most hydrophobic product in this test is the ultra hydrophobic auto glim but i've rated the hydrophobicity about an eight out of ten and at times i've said before that this isn't the ultimate bead um producing product you know i've criticized it for it but it's actually the most hydrophobic in this test so i'd say it's super hydrophobic not ultra hydrophobic but it's decent the best in this test according to what i've done so there is your ranks on beading and at the top three griots um Soft 99 and Auto Glims are the ones to go for if you like that rapid expulsion. The next category is a new one. I've called it Product Basics and it's a whole list of criteria when I get a product and I'm researching it and it's all this information that I want to know. I want to know if I can use it wet or dry because that's important to me. If I can't use it wet, then I can't use it as a drying aid. Um, I want to know if it gives me any 
guidelines around using it in high temperatures? You know, can it be used in, in hot conditions? Because that products can go bad in the summer when you spray them onto hot panels. So it's nice when a product says it's sun safe. I want to know if they've got the correct health and safety information on them. I'm told that all products should have this red, it must be look like that, that red hexagon with the explanation mark on it. Um, why? Because these products are not drinks, they're not cosmetic things that you spray on your skin, and there's implications if you spray them in your eyes and you're, you know, or you ingest them or whatever, and you can't just put on there, I don't believe, you know, if you get it in your hands, wash it off, or you get it in your eyes, wash it off, you have to have that explanation mark, I believe. You can correct me if I'm wrong. You cannot, as well, even have a sign that looks like it with an exclamation mark. I believe it has to have that red box with the white background and the exclamation mark in it. Because um, they all do say that, you know, irritation to skin and stuff like that on them. That's not good enough. Must have that box thing. So that each of these criteria are only worth one mark, but there's a lot of them. I also want information in the instructions on surface suitability, because I want to know if I can spray it on trim. I want to know if I can spray it on the alloys. Can I spray it on glass? You know, can I use it on more than just paintwork of cars? I want to, um, I want to know if the triggers are any good. If the triggers are really good, you get two marks. If they're acceptable, you get one mark. If they're rubbish, you get zero mark. Um, I want in the instructions to tell me to shake it before I use it because some of them I've shaken this up but like this gets like a little fine sort of sediment at the bottom which might be the SiO2 material and you know you need to shake it so or else you're just going to be sucking you know concentrated ingredients right up from the straw at the bottom so a good shake not all of them say that uh, and I will also comment on the branding which is worth four marks the ones that are branded so if they're really sharp top-notch branding and packaging you get four marks if they're awful you might get nothing well you'd have to throw the liquid at me probably to get nothing but we'll go through that so down here with the lowest marks in this category is the angel wax product it doesn't instruct me whether i can use it as a drying aid which means i probably can't it just says i can spray it on panels uh, it doesn't advise me about temperatures if it's, you know, do not use it in the sun. So I, I might assume that I can't use it in the sun. There is no explanation mark um, health and safety thing that I can see on it. In fact, only one product, the Carbon Collective, seems to have that. Um, so none of the products apart from Carbon Collective picked that up. Um, the trigger spray on this bottle, it atomizes nicely. I'll give it that. I'll give it that. It's fine. It doesn't drip. But it's just, with the square shoulder bottle and the very small trigger, it's very hard to hold. And your figure, if it almost wants to slip out your hand so your fingers go under the trigger. So you've got to kind of hold the bottle and just use one finger that you have to stretch. And when you're putting it over an entire car, I don't like that. And I've commented about it before. So I gave that trigger a zero out of two. I just don't like them. I know the argument is, but we want you to use less product and it works well with that trigger. But I can only give you my opinion. Um, next up, the branding. I gave the Angel Wax two out of four. It's got, they've got a good brand. I like, I like the Angel, Angel Wax kind of branding and, you know, all that sort of stuff. But I just think it's all too black. And when it's in lower light, you can't really see much going on with this. So I almost think they need to get the gold back in there or get, Get it a bit brighter so you can really see the lettering. And I don't like the square bottle on there as well. So that's why I only picked up four marks there in that category. Soft 99, uh, I don't know if I can use it wet or dry. So I'm assuming it doesn't say you can use it wet. So it's more of a dry spray sealant. It doesn't tell me about temperature requirements. It hasn't got the, the explanation mark health and safety thing on it. Uh, it doesn't really tell me about surface suitability. You know, it's, it's there to spray on the car, but could I use this on glass? So I have questions around what else. Could I use it on trim? Could I use it in my cockpit? So I have questions around surface suitability with all of these products that I don't give the mark to. So I didn't give it to the mark for that. Um, the trigger in the bottle are a good quality, but the bottle can be a little bit prone. You need to give this a bit of a, if you try and do a gentle pull with it, it will splutter. So you need to go in heavy handed to get the misting, but it's okay. It's a decent bottom trigger. So I gave it one mark there out of two. 
Um, doesn't tell me to shake it. And the overall branding, I gave two out of four for. Forgive that sticker, I've just kept that on there because it just reminds me that I can use it to top it on, on Fuso as well. Um, it is, it's decent, it's decent, isn't it? Decent branding, good bottle that you can get your hand, hands around. Only one product I gave a three out of four for on the, on the branding, so I'm being quite tight. Next up, Ferrecla, um G3 Pro Detailer. Okay, doesn't tell me if I can use it wet or dry. It's sort of, the instructions are all about cleaning your car, like cleaning light dirt, heavy dirt, or ingrained dirt. Um, and they're sort of like spray on, buff off, but it doesn't go into really talking about different surfaces that I could clean potentially with it and whether I can use it wet or dry or whether I need to be careful with it in the sun. So no marks on surface suitability. I can't see a health and safety warning sign on it, although it does tell me there's a health and safety section that again tells me about certain chemicals which look like antimicrobials and stuff like that. Um, but I'm looking for that expl explanation mark and I can't find it. Uh, the trigger is fine. Um, it um, doesn't tell me to shake the product up. It might not need it, but I still want it there to get that mark. I always think when you're using a quick detailer spray, especially when you can't see it, just give it a little shake up, just so it's all mixed up properly. It's always a good idea. Uh, branding, again, decent, two out of kind of four, so somewhere in the middle. Next up, the Autoglin product. Let's just walk through this. Um, it does tell me I can use it wet or dry, which is great. So it got a mark there. It didn't. I think did it. Um, it says don't apply it in direct sunlight, so I can't use this product in the sun or the heat. So in the summer, when my car's outside and I, I might want to use it, I can't if the panels are warm. So that that's a you know quick detail. Is should you should be able to do that, but that's where this thing as a more of a spray sealant isn't quite as user friendly as a detailer, so it gets penalized there. Um, the trigger's okay. Um, it does tell you to shake the product, so it picked up the mark there. And I, again, I've given the branding two out of four. Auto Glim always do this kind of standard branding of their products, and they look, you recognize them, and it's you know a strong brand, but I think it's a little bit dated. I know I've talked before about these square bottles. They're not ergonomic in the hand. Um, and you can't see the product inside. You know, there's some really top branding out there where you can see like the glowing product that gets some psychological trigger glowing, going. And I think you could brand, I think you could brand better. Well, Auto Glim would disagree. Um, next up, what, what have we got here? PNS Dream Maker. Okay, you can use it wet or dry. It doesn't tell me about using it in um, hot temperatures at all, so I assume I can't use it in the sun. It, you've got to be careful with this when it's really moist in this garage, um, and you've got to be careful with it when it's really humid days in the summer as well. It doesn't quite vape as fast as the other ones. I'll talk about that later on. It doesn't have the health and safety warning. It does give me good info on surface suitability. The trigger's decent. Um, doesn't tell me to shake it. And I think the branding is okay. It's a nice quality label. It's a Boston rounded bottle, so you can get your hands around the neck a little bit, but it's not, the PNS logo is a little bit small and it's a bit confused. Like you lose, you don't sort of see what that picture is in the background. It doesn't look, you know, it could be better. So no, none of them have blown me away yet on, on the branding thing. Um, next up, is Titan, so this can be used dry or wet, brilliant. I like to be able to use them wet as drying aids. Doesn't tell me about the temperature thing, uh, or you know, if I can use it in the sun in really hot kind of uh, conditions and stuff like that. Um, it's a lot of information to go through, so I'm just sort of double checking as I go to make sure I haven't made a mistake. It doesn't have, <laughs> they're, gonna, they're gonna not like this because it's got the exclamation mark, but I think it needs to be in that red triangle format to be legal in the UK, I believe. Um, so it doesn't get the mark there, although, you know, it's near enough. Um, it does give me good info on surface suitability. The trigger's okay. It does tell me to shake the bottle up, although it's really well emulsified, but it's good. Uh, I've given the branding a two out of 10. I think that might actually be generous because it, 
it could be better, the label could be a lot better. You could really make it stand out from the crowd, which I talked about when I did the review of it. And I'm really, I really know when a brand, brand well. I just spot it straight away. I think that could be improved, so it's something to uh, think about. So yeah, overall that got seven marks there out of a possible 12 marks here. Next up is the Carbon Collective. Um, right, it can be used wet or dry. It doesn't tell me about the temperature or I think it says, might say brown to a cool panel. Yeah, do not apply in direct sunlight, so I can't use this when the temp, it implies don't use it when the panels are hot, because if the sun's out, the panel's gonna be hot. Um, so that's a shame for a quick detailer. It might be fine, but I've got to go by the instructions. Uh, the health and safety, it's the only one that had that correct label on it, I, I believe, which is good. It doesn't tell me too much about surface suitability as well, I'd like to know. Can I spray it inside? Can I spray it on glass? Can I spray it on metal? Is it, you know, tell me. The Carbon Collective are usually quite good at doing that. Um, it doesn't say to shake the bottle and I give the branding a three out of four. The bottle, the square shoulders do get in the way a little bit, but the trigger's really good on this. I like that. It's got a strong brand logo and identity that stands out a little bit from the crowd. So overall, they picked up eight marks out of a possible 12. But see, all, it's quite simple. Well, let me just finish off. Let me just finish off before I wrap it away. Um, and the best one in this, this kind of product basic category is the griots, okay? It can be used wet or dry. It doesn't tell me about the temperature. It doesn't have the health and safety logo that I'm looking for. Uh, it does tell me about surface suitability. The trigger gets two marks. It's the best trigger. You can just touch it um, and get a little mist from it. You can give it a big beefy draw. Um, it fits in your hand perfectly with that. It just slots into your hand and it grips in there, but you don't get in the way. The bottleneck is tapered in. So it's actually a professional detailer wouldn't want to decant this that the bottle is and trigger are that good that it's properly usable um, and it's really probably the only one that has that a professional would be happy not to decant if you're using it day in day out in my opinion um, it does tell you to shake the bottle which is great and it needs a shake in my opinion and I've given the overall branding and look of the product a three out of four um, I just think it's the best presented um, out of all of them uh, it's quite an old-fashioned thing, so it's not a home run four out of four, but it's the best out of all of them. If I knew nothing about detailing, some of you say I don't, <laughs> but I'd probably just go for that one because it kind of looks the best. Now, let's just, now for a little interlude. All of this stuff is quite important. Brands can look at this section and say, well, who is he talking about? Um, I like to mark on those criteria because... I don't want to have any questions around the product about what I can use it on. I want it all to be there on the labels. And if it's not there, it, you know, you lose a mark. And therefore the brands that do have the most info in there and the good consumer advice, I think that's a really good thing, you know. But it's a combination of all those things telling me about the wet and dry, about the heat, the health and safety, the surface suitability, the triggers, the packaging, all in one category. So Griots have done the best with a nine out of 12, but they're still, a few things missing there. Okay, that's the end of that section. Next up, the patented forensic slickness test. So we apply the products onto a panel and I use little test pieces um, to spray them onto and then just spread a layer of the film over the prepped panel that was cut back and degreased. Um, then the products were all buffed off using separate, separate microfiber towels and it was left for 24 hours to make sure they got a full cure. Um, the least slick product according to the slickness testing was the Carbon Collective. Then after that was the Griots, Ferret Color, uh, PNS Dream Maker, uh, Titan, Autoglim, Fuso Coat and Atomic QD from Angel Wax. Now, if I hadn't done this painted slip slickness test and I had to guess which was the most slick one from buffing it, I would have guessed the Angel Wax QED. It is lovely and slippy and slidey and you can even feel it at the back of your finger. You can feel it when you buff it. You feel it in my toes. I've done that joke before. And it was the one that the thing slid down first. So that's the, definitely the slickest. These three here, I would say you could might be able to notice 
that they're a little bit slicker than the others, but it's very hard to tell. They all felt quite nice. So really, I'm just going on the tilt table results. So there you go, guys. That's the slickness one. And the caveat is really, if you're interested in slick, it is the Atomic QD. That's the outstanding slippery one <laughs> in this test. Next up, what are these products like to apply? Generally, all of them are very, very easy and very, very rapid. But we've got to cross compare them. We've got to try and rank them. Now, so I've put the most difficult one to apply is the Autoglim product. I think this product is loaded in active ingredients. It's the most juiced. It's the one that's on steroids. And it says to use it sparingly. And I noticed when testing it on the roof, even one spray across the roof might, of one half of the roof, might have been too much. So if you do over apply it, it's harder to buff out and you'll notice it more on a black surface. So that's the only danger with the Auto Glim is you need to, you do need to use it sparingly. So I gave that one the least marks on application. Um, in a similar fashion, I suppose, the Soft 99, you also want to put, kind of use that quite sparingly. And the Soft 99 really does need a secondary buff, but it buffs out beautifully. There's other products in here that you could just spray on and just buff them out with a wet cloth and they'll, they'll dry to a streak-free finish. But that, do, this, that does need a secondary buff. We then there's a big just there's a big jump up with the rest of these products where they're all pretty pretty idiot proof and you couldn't really do anything wrong and that's probably the fact that these two are more in that spray sealant category the rapid um the g3 pro rapid detail i gave it seven out of ten for application um it can be a little bit streaky but the streakiness vapes out and disappears so you just don't want to over apply um so that's why it perhaps didn't come in the right in the real top orders but still got high marks the dream maker i gave a 7.5 the only thing i noticed with it is it doesn't flash um in low temperatures like the other ones and it's really cold here in the uk at the moment so you really have to when you spray it out you really have to level it and you can see it but then suddenly it vapes and disappears um, which is quite a cool party trick because it totally disappears but it just takes longer and before it actually vapes You've got this wet film on the panel and then you need to go back and work that wet film down to get it thinner to get it to vape um, so it wasn't the best of the bunch also really with the with the dream maker you really do need to prep the surface properly if you've got any tiny little water spots or anything sometimes you can clear those with a detail spray like this they might have solvent in them or they might have cleaners in them and it will clean that up whereas with the with the dream maker you want a really good surface to apply it to because if you don't, you'll see those kind of defects or watermarks or whatever underneath. So it's not a good cleaner. It's more of a dressing. Next up was the Titan. I, we're getting into the realms where these four are really good. And I felt like the Titan goes on and buffs really well and you get a nice shine underneath it. Can't really, can't really fault it. Same with the Griots. It's a bit wetter than the uh, Titan. It does probably need a dry cloth to buff it, but it's nice and slick and comes back to a really good gloss. Then, these are the two that probably blew me away. The Angel Wax blew me away because the buff just felt really slick. I love feeling that slick buff with the microfiber because it feels like I'm not scratching my paint and it's, if it's low friction, it's gonna be good. I don't know, it might all be psychological, but it, you know, it was the slickest product when we tested it, but it's the slickest when you buff it by quite a long way, really good. But the best one to apply for me was the Carbon Collective. It's probably, the one you can just hurl onto the panel. You can mist it on, you could be cautious, you could throw loads on. And I only really need one cloth with this. As I'm working it into a film, it's vaping with a streak-free finish without me using it, I have to flip the cloth and go back over. Just really nice, really nice to use. So that got the, the top application marks for me. So there's the order on application and I'll put the scoring up on the columns. I had to move the columns around. I've got I put a few in the wrong places and I put the bead maker up there so there's no room to put the scores so that's a stick it down the bottom you've probably seen the continuity anyway get on with it next up gloss testing using a Gonio photometer and a four reading average and flip head over to the forensics unplugged channel where I'll publish another video where I go through and show you some live testing where I repeat it all to validate my results which give you some interesting insights so the product that recorded the least gloss was the Freckler with 
gloss units. After that was the Autoglim with 81.2. After that was the Griots with 85.8. After that was the Titan with 87.5. After that, we're getting into the glossy territory now, was the PNS Big Dream Maker with 88.2. After that was the Carbon Collective with um, 88.5. After that, this another jump up was the Angel Wax Atomic with a 90.2. And then when the one that recorded the highest gloss was the PTFE based, surprised me a little bit, Soft 99 recording an average of 91.1. It's quite an important test this. So there's your glossy products if you really want them. Perhaps these four had a little edge, or maybe even that one. That wasn't far off the Dream Maker, was it? So these are probably the glossier ones. Um, there you go. Finally, guys, durability by way of chemical resistance. So we put them on, the, you know, they've been on the panels. We then put the Surfex HD on it, left it for half an hour, rinsed off. Put the Surfex HD again at a slightly higher concentration, trying to, trying to get them off the panels. Uh, rinsed it off and here's my thoughts on durability by way of chemical resistance testing these three products here this is the order so dream maker the worst carbon collective and freckler don't buy these three products if you're looking for durable protection that's not what they're about in my opinion they're more sort of detail sprays dressings but they're not about durability next up the angel x product didn't have good hydrophobicity so it might struggle to demonstrate its durability but i could get this quick detail off of the panel um, I can ten, tend to tell when they're still there. These next four then get into actually where they're getting into a decent kind of category. This was coming off of the panel though after that second hit, but it did pretty well to survive that. Um, but these three were the ones that were still probably going and still providing protection. Um, the Speed and Barrier, the Griots, and in first place, the Auto Glim, which is a really durable product whenever I've done these testings. Um, and three months might be a little bit conservative on this product for their claim. You know, it's impressive, the durability of the Autoblim product. Okay. Okay, guys, let's wrap this up now with the totals. So down here, picking up the least amount of marks of so a Freckler with 37, then the PNS Dream Maker with 39.5, and then the Carbon Collective close to it with 40. Now, these three products, they get penalised when we're testing durability and testing hydrophobicity um, which could be harsh because they're they're not trying to offer you that so that's why they've got low scores the freckler product is a decent kind of spray and shine that can clear off dust off of your car and its claim to fame is it's the best value in this particular test the dream maker you could argue it's a one trick pony it's like a, the final dressing it's like a paintwork dressing that does offer good gloss and slickness i think it does have a little bit of the wow factor but from a protection point of view can't compete with the, these other ones that we go up the field the carbon collective is the one that i just like spraying on the car and buffing i find it's the easiest one to use out of all of them it's probably my favorite of these three ones that have picked up the least amount of marks now we go into the ones that have with this that have got a few more marks now the angel wax atomic qed with 43 points the claim to this is the slickness and maybe that's coming from the graphene there's all sorts of debates around graphene and its ability and there's a good technical blurb on the back of it about what the graphene does but it's a very slick product i think perhaps the disadvantage of it is even it's advertised as a qed so like a quick detailer but again, it's more of like a paintwork enhancer, the final finish. It doesn't bead up too well, and it is very expensive. But there are signs, there are grassroots that the graphene can offer you stuff, perhaps that the others can't. And it's very shiny as well. So it's not a disaster, that one, but it's fallen into the middle of the order. Um, then with 45 points, so there's a good step up again, is the Soft 99 Speed and Barrier. The glossiest one in the test, the second most slick in the test, perhaps more of a paintwork protectant spray on sealant, if you like. A great topper for Fuso coat. It does add a fair amount of beading. It does have pretty decent durability. Um, perhaps on its own, as a standalone spray sealant, it's not as good as the Fuso paste wax, which you know we know can get near to 12 months with the with the original version of it. This can't do 12 months. So it's less epic, you know, it's less viral, but it's still, I think, done quite well. The difference 
in, in points is very minimal now. This is just 0.5 more. So picking up 45.5, actually in joint second place, is the Auto Glim. This product is really a mega concentrated, very durable ceramic type spray that you would use and could use to seal your car and it will probably outperform most con conventional paste wax, it really will, but it's relatively easy to apply a spray and buff. Just follow the instructions and don't hurl it on is the tip. Just use small amounts of it because it is really powerful. Um, in joint second with 45.5 is the Griots. This is the first one that does everything well. You can use it as a quick detail, even though it says it's a ceramic three-in-one wax. It's, it sprays on. Griots do some really nice like watery spray emulsion things. They're best of show wax and their best of show detail are very good. And this kind of takes those to the next level and has a little bit more protection, a little bit more durability. So it's a good all rounder and probably a worthy second place. Very good trigger on it as well. The winner that's just pipped it with 46, so it's one by point, point 0.5 is the Titan, the Phoenix Titan Hybrid Ceramic Detailer. Why? It's done well in all of the tests and it hasn't had any major boo-boos. It's reasonably affordable. I criticized it for perhaps being a little bit expensive, but it's actually in the higher, I think it was fourth or something on price. It's reasonably well presented. It smells nice. You can use it very casually. Just spray it on a buffet and it feels just like a normal detailer. But it does slicken up well. It does give good gloss. Um, the durability is kind of reasonable. But it's probably the best all-rounder that bridges the gap between the extreme quick detailers that don't have much protection and the extreme spray sealants on the other end, like the Auto Glim, which are really kind of durable spray sealants in their own right. And it sits somewhere in the middle and it does everything well. And I pretty, as you know, the testing has put it 0.5, you know, it's put it as the winner points wise. And looking at this field, I think it probably is the best all rounder. Very good product. So that's this test. So if you're looking for something you can grab and spray on your car and it does a bit of everything, you can even tidy up the paint uh, panels with it, use it very casually. You can even use it every wash. And I, I wouldn't use the Auto Glim, for example, every time I wash my car because it's too, it's too durable. It's an overkill. You know, it's too much protection. Whereas you could use that every single time. Um, so, Titan Phoenix, what could improve? I think it just, for a product that performs that well, it could just come in a slightly better bottle with slightly better branding and a top of the range trigger like Griot's in some sort of unique, highly desirable branding. And then, then it would be like even more desirable and catch on even more, I think, because the branding is very important. So um, all of these products, guys, if they make it onto my channel, they're because you've recommended them. I want them in the test. I consult my patrons and they've said they're good. So we've got a good lineup of products here. Yes, we're not comparing apples with apples, as I said before, but that makes it quite interesting. And I think I've given you all the key features of each of the products here, and I've enjoyed this. So all that's left to say is, if you've not subscribed, do so. We've got loads more coming. We're going to be moving on to citrus testing soon, and that's going to be great fun as well. So I've really enjoyed this detail spray product testing, and um, take care. See you soon. Where was I?